Right, welcome to part two. In the first video, we covered the advantages of a sink coil, the suitability of a motor, and also different methods of working out how much metal you have to remove. Then we showed the milling, and also a way of checking the balancing if you think it needs it. In this second video, we're now going to test the modified motor to make sure it is synchronous and then explain the theory behind the phase controller and also how you'd work out the capacitor value you're going to use that the controller needs.
This is the setup that I will be using to see the position of the electrodes in relation to the sine wave. It basically consists of a little infrared detector and emitter. The beam cross there, and then once the terminals go through, cuts the beam. The output from here goes high, and that sends that to the scope. Here's the phase controller. I've got three caps that I'll be using. I'll be putting them in parallel with one another, then gradually disconnecting one, then another one to see which is the best value to use. The scope has got two inputs. The first input is from the rotor itself, which is what we've just seen. As you're moving the rotor through the beam, that's what it does, it creates an output on the scope. The sine wave or the half of the sine wave is fed in on the other channel and that just comes from a mobile phone charger and it just gives a representation of the main sine wave for you to compare it against. What you will see when the thing is actually running, you'll see a spike when it cuts through the beam. Here the whole line is moving up and down. That's because the beam is just being cut by a very slow moving electrode. But when it's running fast at 3000 RPM you'll get a nice well defined spike and it will sit somewhere on the sine wave depending on the phase setting we're using at the time. These sort of gaps are quite time intensive to build, I must admit. You also need quite a bit of specialist equipment. Well, I say specialist, if, if you're not into electronics, and I'm not particularly into it, but I've got some basic stuff. Um, if you're not into that at all, you might struggle a bit to build one. Um, a lathe is handy for turning the discs and also for making the electrodes. In my particular case, that lathe wouldn't handle the size of disc, which is 12 inch that I've used. So a friend of mine kindly cut, turned both of my discs up for me. Although it did do quite nicely for the electrode holders which are all turned out of brass. A scope is handy to actually see what you've got. Obviously a voltmeter is fairly basic equipment. And to actually do the rotor itself, well really you want a mill. Um, this is a rather ancient old thing actually, but it, it does its job. That's, that's the main thing. To get the rotors cut both sides to an actually equal amount so there's no imbalance in the rotor as it's spinning around it's quite difficult unless you've got a mill people have managed they say with files and also by using uh, angle grinders although personally I think I'd rather stick to a mill or otherwise get someone to use a mill 
for me to build one. Well I hope this video has been useful to you and good luck.